Hello everyone, hope you're having the most awesome day today. Welcome to the Film Insight channel. For today's video, we're going to discuss some more of the worst bars to be featured on Bar Rescue and reveal how they're doing now. So, sit back, relax, and without further ado, let's get right into the content guys. Swanky Bubbles For a season 1 episode, John Taffer heads over to Swanky Bubbles in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania to rescue it from closure. Owned by John Frankowski, he was met with great success in the beginning, making a whopping $100,000 a month. Though as time went on, the Champagne Bar's gimmick got old and their sales sadly began to decline. Since Frankowski is barely at the bar, he leaves most of the important decisions to his co-owner Ryan. While it may sound like a good thing, Ryan values the customer's happiness, but so much so that it hurts the server's wallets on top of the bar's profits. Considering the fact that they were losing $4,000 a month and digging themselves into a deep pit of debt, the owners called out to Taffer for some aid. After arriving with his wife Nicole, he sends her in alongside her friend Valerie to get an idea of the customer experience. Upon entering, the pair scan the humongous menu and are quickly introduced to Ryan who insists on giving them free drinks. Getting a drink called Sexual Chocolate Martini, the co-owner weirdly implies that this was him as a drink. Creeped out by Ryan's remarks, the spies head back to Taffer and report the things that they've seen. Appalled with what he was just told, the famous rescuer rushes inside to confront Ryan about his actions. Leaving and returning the following day, Taffer holds a staff meeting and notices that the bar is filthy and disorganized. Asking the staff what they think is wrong with the business, most point to Ryan, but others express that they constantly run out of liquor and are forced to buy bottles themselves to have something to work with. Unimpressed with how far Swanky Bubbles has fallen, Taffer invites in chef Brian Hill and mixologist Elaine Duke to train the staff. Both experts tour the area and try to assess what needs to be worked on. Generally speaking, they believe that the place needs some deep cleaning and that the menus need to be shortened. Training the staff soon after on the basics of mixing and cooking, Taffer was ready to launch a stress test. All in all, while the staff was overwhelmed with the traffic, they did pretty well, but Ryan failed to take control of his business. Fast forward to near the end of the episode, after Taffer got the bar cleaned and the staff to set things up, it was finally time to move into the renovations. Renaming the place to Sheer, the bar rescue host gave the business a complete makeover that was not only classy but sophisticated and revamped the menu. When they finally relaunched, the patrons weren't too happy at first, but the staff eventually made it work. Post Bar Rescue, the owners decided to rename the place back to Swanky Bubbles almost immediately after Taffer left. Asked about the bar sales months later, the owner didn't want to make a comment, which is pretty odd. If it isn't obvious, the bar ended up closing down in November of 2011 since they had issues with the landlord and failed to secure a liquor license. Kilkenny's Irish Pub In another Season 1 episode, John Taffer heads over to Kilkenny's Irish Pub to bring it back on its feet. Owned by Ali Speed, she opened the pub with the financial help of her sister Alexis, who poured all of her inheritance into the business. Initially, the pub was a huge hit, but this quickly went downhill when Ali's ex-boyfriend Carlos became the manager. Not only did the business plunge into $900,000 of debt, but it's on the verge of closing down, which is why the owner called out to Taffer for some help. Upon his eventual arrival with his wife yet again, he immediately sends her in to get a customer's perspective. Once she finally enters, she notices that there isn't anything Irish about the bar and that Ali's hanging out like a customer would. After ordering a margarita that was served in the only margarita glass they had available, Nicole heads back to her husband to report how trashy the place was. Having heard enough, Taffer heads into the bar to see how bad things really are and later confronts Ali. He points out that she shouldn't be drinking on the job and forces her to shut down the bar so he can start the rescue. Gathering the staff together soon after, Taffer discusses what he plans to do with the pub and Ali seems ticked off since they closed down early on a Saturday. Leaving and returning the following day, the bar rescue host meets with the owner and her sister to point out how filthy everything is and compares the place to a dive bar. Embarrassed with what they had just seen, the two agree to listen to whatever Taffer has for advice. To turn things around, the famous rescuer first starts by inviting in his experts, more specifically chef Josh Capone and mixologist Michael Tips. Looking around, both experts are appalled to see how disorganized the place is and extremely unsanitary. Before moving into the training phase, Taffer decides to meet with Ali's ex slash manager Carlos who doesn't leave the best first impression. Not only does he seem preoccupied with his phone, but when Taffer tells him to put the thing down, he rudely says, hold on a minute. Through some heated discussion with this pathetic man, the famous rescuer essentially tells him to grow up and do his job. Later on, Taffer gets his experts to train the staff on how to make some new dishes and make some simple cocktails. Unfortunately, Kilkenny didn't have the necessary ingredients and supplies to make the new drinks, which prompted Tips to dub the place as a train wreck. At the very least, Taffer hoped to get the bar's finances in order before he moved into the renovations, so he helped them with that. 
Nearing the end of the episode, the famous rescuer renamed the place to Breakwall Bar and Grill and remodeled both the interior and exterior to give it a beach theme. Aside from receiving tons of beautiful decor, Taffer deep cleaned the building and hooked them up with new glassware and a POS system. Being as childish as can be, Carlos was furious about the changes made and threatened to undo all of Taffer's work. Confronting the owner and her sister about this incident soon after, they thankfully decide to fire Carlos, which is well deserved. Months after the taping of this episode, the bar's drink sales shot up and Ali became the head manager to replace her ex. Ultimately though, the bar closed down in January of 2012 since they decided to surrender their liquor license. In an interview with the local press, the owner expressed that it was impossible to stay open due to their insanely high debts. Win, place, or show? As our final entry, we're going to discuss a bar that John Taffer attempted to rescue called Win, Place, or Show. Owned by a Navy veteran named Barry Rogers, he purchased the biker bar back in 2010 with $50,000 of his life savings. Sadly though, since the previous owners left the bar with a tarnished reputation, not many customers came in. Unsure of how to move forward, the owner decided to ask for the help of his friend Rudy Garcia, who became the business's co-owner. Additionally, Roger's wife Tracy became a bartender, but due to her lack of experience, she hasn't done too much else other than hurt the bar. Since the business was $100,000 in debt and months away from closing down, the owners called out to Taffer for some guidance. When he finally arrives with expert bartender Jason Brand and chef Aaron McCargo, they point out that the bar is in a good location but has a misleading sign. Rather than look like a sports bar as intended, Taffer expressed that it resembled a horse betting place. Hoping to get a better idea of the customer experience, the bar rescue host sends in a spy for recon. Ordering a Long Island iced tea from the menu, the spy is unimpressed with how much alcohol was added to his drink. Hungry, he also ordered a platter of food that was cooked in the microwave which looked absolutely disgusting. While the spy was left unsatisfied, Garcia sat at the bar doing jack all and Rogers isolated himself in his office. Having seen more than enough, Taffer heads into the bar and confronts Garcia about his lack of respect for the business. Inspecting around, Taffer and his experts find old limes, dirty soda guns, grease in the fryer, and spoiled chicken thawing on the counter. Disgusted, the famous rescuer leaves and returns the following day to have an important meeting with the staff. Taffer exposes the fact that they lost well over $600 worth of alcohol the prior Saturday after taking a look at their report. Coming clean about his theft, Garcia admits that he's given away a lot of beer to customers and that the staff aren't to blame. After training the staff on the menu items that would be implemented, Taffer was finally ready to launch a stress test. Predictably, the service wasn't exactly the smoothest since the bartenders forgot how to make certain drinks and made a lot of mistakes. Soon after the awful service concluded, the bar rescue host made sure to call out Tracy for being a horrible bartender. The following day, Taffer returns with his experts and notices that everyone is present but Tracy, who seems to have quit. Having a chat with the owners, the famous rescuer points out that Rogers needs a real partner who wants to grow his business since Garcia barely cares. Deciding on giving the position to a bartender named Amber, who was clearly passionate about the establishment, Taffer then brought in his experts to train the staff before he got into the renovations. Fast forward to near the end of the episode after Taffer renamed the place to America Live and gave it a wonderful makeover, the bar's future was looking bright. Weeks after the taping of this episode, the owners reported that the sales went up by 25%, which is fantastic. However, they were forced to close down in July of 2012 since the landlord locked them out of the building for not being able to pay rent. Well, that'll be all for today's video here on the channel. I do hope you enjoyed, and if you did, be sure to drop a massive like down below and comment your thoughts. Subscribe for more content like this and turn on those sweet bell notifications for instant access to our content. Have a good one, guys.